I wouldn't start writing a single line of copy without first defining my ideal customer profile, my realistic customer profile, who is my buyer persona. Welcome to the High Converting Landing Pages uh, workshop by Gons. So I'm Gons originally from uh, Argentina, but based in uh, Barcelona. Uh, I lived uh, in a bunch of places. I've been in Cincinnati in the US, Milan, Paris, and as I said, now, now Barcelona. Um, my background is in growth. Uh, I've been leading growth teams at uh, venture back companies for almost the, the past decade. So I've built uh, a few landing pages uh, here and there. Uh, so I have some experience mostly uh, between like very early stage up to late series A or early series uh, B. Um, on top of my day job, about a year or so ago, I started a side project uh, called Seat Table. Uh, that's essentially a newsletter on European technology. Uh, and what started as just a side project for some friends and, and my connections and my mom, um, it ended up, uh, it became something that's slowly taking over my life. So now, um, it goes out every Friday to about 12,000 subscribers. Uh, because a podcast, I'm starting to uh, do some investments out of it. So, uh, yeah, so um, that's me. So today's workshop is on high converting uh, landing pages. Um, never done this before, so I'm going to try and see if it fits uh, uh, within one hour. So this workshop is not for people who are, uh, let's say, super experienced in growth. Uh, what this does is um, I, I'm going to try to provide you guys a framework, not just to think uh, about landing pages, but what comes before and what comes after uh, designing a uh, high converting landing page. So this is uh, roughly the agenda. Uh, we'll start with what is a landing page and then the difference between a home page and landing page, uh, the, pro the process and the structure, uh, measuring success, and then we'll do some Q&A uh, and some live feedback. So. Ideally, you'll show some of your landing pages on the Slack channel. Um, I posted the link on the Zoom chat. So um, we'll do some live feedback, some live critique of some landing pages. I have a few open um, right now, um, but someone, like a couple of people shared earlier. So we'll start with those two and then uh, hopefully we'll get more. Um, so yeah, let's, let's get things started if you guys are ready. I'll take that, that as a solid yes. Um, perfect, so what is landing page? So landing page has one goal, uh, to get a visitor to do something. So um, it usually has sort of three things, uh, three legs. First, an introduction to your company slash product slash solution. I mean, what can I do for you? How can I do it? Why can I do it? Or so why I'm the right person to do it and whether this is for you or not then a landing page try, tries to address uh, objections and concerns. And finally, uh, a landing page has a call to action. Um, ideally, uh, a landing page should, should have everything the visitor might need to make a decision right there in that URL. Um, and at the end of the day, a landing page is just a mix of art and science. There's no perfect way to do one. Um, today, I'm just gonna share some uh, best um, practices and just a quick framework to think uh, through how to start landing pages. So I'm using the term landing page here, but you're totally guys, most of you since you're very early stage, uh, you're thinking about uh, your home page, not your landing page, right? So usually, or at least when you start working with later stage uh, startups and your company start, starts growing, they're not the same thing. So the homepage is really an introduction to the company and converting traffic should be taken into account, but it's not the main uh, focus. So I'm gonna show you some examples. Um, well, landing page, it's usually referred to as a page that's specific for campaigns. And the main focus is converting traffic from a specific source to do a specific thing. So uh, a great example I could find was uh, for Sigmatic. So this is our homepage, uh, essentially it's, it's a perfect explanation of the company. Um, and then this landing page for, uh, for Sigmatic's uh, podcast advertising with Joe Rogan. So uh, this page is very specific to converting Joe Rogan listeners to customers. So 
that said, uh, when you're starting out, your home page is usually your landing page. Uh, so today we're gonna start. We're gonna use the term landing page, uh, but we're gonna refer to those things interchangeably. So, with that said, or with that preface, uh, let's go into uh, the process. So, the process for me, uh, I wouldn't start writing a single line of copy without first defining my ideal customer profile, my realistic customer profile, who's my buyer persona. Uh, then define the value propositions. Um, then I'll start writing copy in a Google Docs. Uh, then I move into design and building, which we won't cover in detail um, today because I'm a growth person and an engineer. And finally, setting up goals, events, um, and analytics, just setting yourself up for, for success. So the first part of the process is to define your ideal customer profile your realistic customer profile and your buyer persona, your customer persona. So your ideal customer profile is, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's who is your ideal customer? Uh, who are you targeting? But we want to, what we want to really uh, pay attention to is the realistic customer profile. It's not your ideal customer, but who can you get as a customer uh, right now? And the third thing is your customer persona. Uh, who specifically if you're, is your buyer? For instance, if you're selling to businesses, uh, who is the persona you're selling to? Um, I'm linking to some resources throughout the presentation, uh, but I'm gonna share this on the Slack channel afterwards, so um, don't, don't worry about it. Now, let's, let's kick off with an example just to make things easier. So imagine you saw a tool that helps e-commerce companies ship stuff. I'm just calling it fast ship right now. Um, and it's typical e-commerce tool, uh, it's a SaaS app. Um, so yeah, you can probably picture uh, how it works. So um, let's go back to defining your ICP, your RCP and your persona. So again, you're selling to e-commerce stores, then your, your ideal customer profile could be a big DTC company. They make more than 50 million a year. They have millions of visitors every month. They have a hundred employees or more, and they have a marketing team that handles most of their growth stuff. Um, they sell internationally. They have thousands of SKUs. Um, they ship with five or more shipping companies. You get it. Like this is the customer that once you get, you open up a champagne, right? Um, then you have the realistic customer profile, and this is very relevant as you start. So the realistic customer profile is is, is not your ideal. Uh, target is the one who you can sort of get right now with your existing features, with your existing security setup, with your existing, existing integrations and all that stuff. So that's who, who you should be targeting at, at first. So in this case, going back to the e-commerce tool, your RCP or realistic customer profile would be, would be um, a small e-commerce company, maybe less than 10 employees, they use Shopify, uh, they were doing less than 5 million a year. They have only a handful of SKUs, uh, just one marketing person, or maybe the CEO is a marketing person, and they ship just with UPS, for instance. So that's a lot more realistic, considering, let's say, early stages. And within that RCP, um, you have the sort of the customer persona or the, the buyer persona. In this case, uh, I'm naming her Lisa. She's a marketing manager, she's 31. Uh, she has some experience, lives in Philadelphia, enjoys X, Y, and Z, and then reads HubSpot, e-commerce fuel, and a bunch of other sources. So now, whenever you start uh, thinking through your landing pages, your uh, growth campaigns, everything, like everything should start with defining your ICP, your RCP, and then your persona. And then, of course, focusing on the realistic customer profile and the persona. So once you do that, sort of the next step would be to define um, the value propositions. So um, essentially when you build something, you have to position your products around the, what the customer uh, values and what the customer needs, right? So in the fast ship case, uh, essentially you ask, what does fast ship does and what does it does for your customer persona? So, a value proposition is just a simple uh, statement that summarizes why a customer would choose your product or service. 
And there are probably many reasons, and, and, and we'll see a few examples in a bit. Uh, but the key thing here is uh, for value propositions, it's not just about the statement. Um, you have to dig uh, much deeper. What problems do your, uh, does your uh, customer persona have right now? Uh, what are the implications of those problems? What are the solutions? Uh, and then what are the benefits of those solutions? So for that, um, I use what I call the value prop matrix. Uh, it's essentially a spreadsheet uh, that I'm gonna show you guys in a bit where I list uh, the value propositions on the first column and then the problems, implications, solutions, and benefits of that uh, value proposition. So let's go back to, to, to our e-commerce tool that helps businesses ship uh, stuff uh, faster. So uh, one value prop of our product could be that it prints shipping labels in seconds. What's the problem that this solves? Well, uh, filling shipping labels manually is time consuming and error prone. Uh, what are the implications of, of that problem? Well, the time could be better, better spent uh, doing something with a better return on investment. Uh, if there's an error, the customer might not get their purchase or shipping mistakes, again, if there's an error, could be expensive. So those are the implications. What's the solution or how does the product um, solve this? Well, there's a feature called one-click printing. The label is created and printed automatically based on the customer's uh, shipping information. And what's the benefit? It saves time, it reduces mistakes, it avoids shipping fees, and it makes your customers happy. Um, there's a link here to a Google Sheets uh, template that I use uh, when I try to define the value propositions for any new project or company I work with. Uh, that it looks something like this. So here's a template. Uh, you guys are gonna be able to just make a copy and, and, and use it yourself. This is the fast ship um, example that I just um, mentioned on the slides. And then there's a real example of a company I work with, which is um, a relocation software company. And these are some of the sort of value propositions of the software, the problems, that they um, solve implications of those problems, the solutions, and then um, the benefits. This might look like a pain in the in the ass, in part of my French, but it's it's very very important to just get the foundations right because this is you're going to use all this uh, copy and all these statements and all these problems and all these benefits as you write your landing page copy and then your ad creatives and then your cold emails and essentially everything you need to put out there uh, to generate um, customers. So I'm linking uh, to that here. So uh, the, this is just a fairly straightforward exercise. You open up the spreadsheet, uh, you start thinking about what are the value propositions of your product or service or solution, and then you just run through the framework, problem, implication, solution, and benefit. Once you've done that, uh, you probably have multiple value propositions, not just one. Uh, then, and only then, it's time to um, go ahead and write copy. So um, the copy, as I mentioned, comes from the value props uh, exercise. And more often than not, you can just literally copy some of the stuff that you wrote before. Um, the copy needs to be clear uh, and easy to read. Uh, for instance, in this case, uh, copy should be locked closer to never make a, a shipping mistake again or say, save money and time with your shipping than something like reinventing the future of e-commerce shipping. That says nothing to a visitor, uh, particularly nothing to, let's say, uh, the CEO of a mom and pop uh, e-commerce business making less than five million a year. So. The other thing about the copy is that it needs to be about your customer, uh, not about you. Uh, for instance, you can do X or you can say uh, Y instead of we do X or we do Y. Uh, and finally, uh, the structure is an art, uh, not a science, uh, but I do have a recommended, uh, or a, a recommended structure or a starting point. So um, for me, it all starts with navigation, then a hero section about the fold, some social proof, uh, the personas that this targets, uh, some benefits or how it works, more social proof, and a big call to action. 
I'm going to show you a couple of examples from real live uh, landing pages that I think are really, really good uh, and why. Um, but before that, I do that, I want to show you another template I put together for you guys. Uh, and this is a template I use to start writing the copy uh, myself, right? Um, because for me, a landing page starts from a Google Doc, um, but just writing like uh, like an article it doesn't make a lot of, of sense. It's hard to see the structure and how things uh, fit together, the hierarchy. So essentially, um, I put together this um, Google Docs uh, that I used to start with my landing page copy. Um, and it's essentially um, what I described before. It starts with the navigation, then a hero section, uh, social proof with logos or testimonials, uh, then personas uh, or use cases, uh, finally the, the benefits. Uh, so you got the benefits on the left, the sun supporting imagery on the right, uh, benefit two, benefit three. Uh, three, benefit four, and so on and so forth. Uh, testimonials, a better call to action um, on the four, and essentially some call to actions just sprinkled throughout the, the page. Again, this is linked on the slides, um, but this is how I start um, thinking about my landing pages, right? So from defining the ideal customer profile, um, all the way to defining the value propositions and then the problems, um, the implications of those problems, the, the benefits and the solutions of solving uh, that problem. So once I get that, I start uh, just working my way through this template. Um, probably the hero is going to be your main uh, value proposition. In this case, I know, save time and money with shipping or whatever that might be, and then um, you're gonna start going down. So you put some customer logos or testimonials, uh, then some personas, so maybe you target two guys, uh, you got the Lisa, the marketing manager, but you, you could also target whatever, Jeff, who is the CEO, who does marketing himself, so you have those two personas and you make it very, very clearly. Then the benefits, I only came up with, with one feature, uh, which is, um, you know, one click uh, shipping labels. So that could be one of our, like a feature here and then the supporting imagery, imagery of how it works on the right. Then more testimonials and a bigger call to action, like uh, request a demo, uh, free trial, um, whatever that might be, you know? Um, so once you work through that, I'm gonna show you a couple of examples. Um, so I'm gonna show you just a very typical example and then I want to show you that really works and then the point here is that you should uh, just um, do whatever it works for your business this is a starting point so this is Ahrefs this is a tool for um, for SEO essentially um, and I think this is one of the best landing pages I've ever seen so um, the value proposition is right there uh, you don't have to be an SEO to rank higher and get more traffic the call to action is loud and clear. Start a seven day trial, trial for seven, uh, for seven dollars. And then um, the social proof is just perfect. Uh, how many users join in the last seven days? And then some customer logos, right? And that, that just, that's about the fold. You can see perfectly the moment you, you, you open up this page. Uh, then it explains what it does. Uh, it's, it's an all-in-one SEO tool set with free learning materials and a passion community to support. And it explains some of the use cases. So you can optimize your website, you can you could analyze your competitors, you could study what your customers are searching for, you could learn uh, from your industry uh, top performing content, and you can track your market progress. So yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna quickly scroll through this, but you can see how they they were able to distill a very complex product uh, with a lot of other stuff like learning materials and a community, and they make it super super clear. Uh, so they provide a bunch of different things. Um, they essentially walk through the um, through their framework I was suggesting, uh, and they finalize it with a big call to action. This is super super fancy, uh, but it's 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 really good. Um, the other one that I really like is uh, the script. They are a podcasting tool, um, and it's again it's 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 a great landing page. Um, 
develop profits, it's very simple. It's how you make a podcast. Record, transcribe, edit, mix, as easy as type it. Um, so then what they do is they have this, they, they have this video, which is just fantastic. Um, but I'm, I'm not gonna watch that right now. But you can see how they show the features one by one. Uh, edit all your edits and text, uh, drag and drop to add music and sound effects, use a timeline editor for fine tuning, uh, live collaboration, um, testimonials, multi-track recording, uh, more features, um, then more social proof, another call to action. So, and finally, uh, another one that's very, very simple, but really, really works, it's the morning room. It's just what you're seeing right now, uh, above the fold, just uh, an H1, a title, a description, <laughs> an opt-in form, and that's it. And this really works for them, of course. Um, the, comp the more complex the product, the longer, uh, not longer really, but the more effort you should put on your, on your landing page or on this stolen your product into a landing page. So uh, let's imagine you went through all this, um, you have a Google Docs, uh, ready to go with your copy. So instead of this title, so you, here you have whatever, save time and money, uh, money on shipping. Um, the next step is essentially uh, building it, uh, designing it and building it. So there are a million ways to do this. Um, I'm not gonna go super, super deep, deep into it. Uh, you could hire freelancers, uh, you could work with our on that fellows, you could use something like uh, Webflow, which I really recommend. You can just use WordPress. Um, I'm gonna share a couple of links of the ways I suggest someone who is not technical could build a landing page, but I'm gonna do that after the, after the call. And of course, if you have any questions um, about this, we can tackle that during the sort of the questions uh, section. Now, after you did all this, ICP, value props, write copy, uh, design and build it, which as I said, uh, I'm not gonna uh, dive into it right now. Uh, the last thing you gotta do is, <laughs> you gotta install analytics and pixels. So the three things that I usually recommend people to start with is Google Analytics, uh, Facebook Pixel, and then either Hotjar or Full Story, which are tools that allow you to see how visitors interact uh, with your landing page. Um, I do strongly suggest that you install uh, Google Analytics, set up the right filters and define a couple of goals uh, or events. Then set up a Facebook pixel and a hot jar or full story to see how people interact with your landing page. Now, once you do this, I guess you have your landing page. Uh, you need to start thinking about whether uh, what you're doing works, right? You need to start measuring success. So measuring success, when you, when you don't have a lot of traffic, uh, you're an early stage startup, you have a few ideas, uh, it's hard. Like you don't even know what success means. So looking at typical landing page metrics, like let's say conversion rates, it's not super, super helpful at, at, at this stage or at the stage that we are. So at this stage, we're really trying to do two things. A, uh, find out if your solution works. Uh, B, understand if your buyer persona cares about that solution. And then C, discover how to reach your buyer's persona. So I have, an, I have a framework for this um, that um, I am essentially drawing an analogy from a board game called uh, Battleship. So um, what I call this framework uh, playing battle, battleships. I, I put battlefield for some reason, I guess I will. I got confused, but um, so you have an X axis uh, with numbers and a Y axis with letters. And the game for you is making educated guesses to figure out where are your opponent's ships. So let's say uh, C3, uh, whatever, you, you probably have played uh, battleships before. So why am, am I showing you this? Because what I like to do is I like to play battleship with my growth channels. So um, I usually set up a spreadsheet, <laughs> again, uh, I kind of like spreadsheets, where the x-axis has uh, the ballot props uh, and the messaging, and the y-axis has my channels. So uh, you can see on the left here, you have cold outreach, LinkedIn advertising, newsletter sponsorships, Google AdWords, whatever you want to try, um, 
just to grow your company, right? Uh, on, the, on the top, you can see the different value positions. Um, this looks sort of like this. Um, and I'm going to show you guys in a bit. Uh, but essentially what I do is with this framework, I set up multiple campaigns. So in this case, I have four uh, channels I want to test and four um, value props I want to test. So essentially I combine ch channel and value props and set up 16 different campaigns. So uh, I do all the value props with cold average. So cold average plus value prop one, cold average plus value prop two, uh, and so on and so forth. And I iterate that uh, throughout all the channels. Um, and what I do is, what I, I try to figure out which combination of channel and value props or messaging um, essentially uh, hits the chatbot, right? So in this case, um, I could show you how it looks like, but essentially after I tested uh, the 16 different campaigns, uh, I could see that cold average with value for prop three um, works, and then uh, newsletter sponsorships with value prop two uh, works. So I also have a spreadsheet for that, as I mentioned. Um, same thing, uh, you can do it with value props, you can do it with messaging, you can do it with different personas. So going back to the e-commerce tool, uh, I picked uh, Lisa as, as, as my persona, who was the marketing manager, but maybe, maybe your, your, your persona is not a marketing manager. It's a CEO who does marketing part-time and needs, needs help with shipping, for instance. So uh, I have this spreadsheet, um, which I'm gonna share with you guys as well, but essentially I have all the combinations and for each combination, I set up a new tab uh, with a quick uh, funnel. So uh, either week by week or the day by day, um, I record how, my, how much uh, I spend, both in time and money, how many visits I generate, how many leads, how many sales, and what's the customer acquisition cost. Yep, so I do this for uh, as many combinations of campaigns, value props, and channels uh, as I can. And eventually you find stuff that works and you double down on it. Uh, so. As I was mentioning, um, yeah, you can also do it for, for personas. Uh, cool, but I think I think that's pretty much uh, everything on my end. So like 30 minute session on how to do landing pages. Just to recap, uh, you start by defining who your ideal customer profile is. Based on that, you think about who your realistic customer profile is, meaning who you can target right now with your existing set of features, with your existing team size, with your existing integrations, with, with your existing security setup, all that stuff. And then within that uh, realistic customer uh, profile, who is your buyer persona, if that's a thing. From that, you start defining the um, value propositions. Um, always thinking about this value prop, problem, implications, uh, solutions, and benefits framework. Um, and from that, or and only uh, once you have that, you start writing um, copy on a Google Docs. Uh, once the copy is done, it, it will usually take you a few days. I write a first draft, uh, and then I go back to it. I share with my team, I share with friends, essentially. It takes me a few days to go through this, but it's quick since most of the legwork has been done with your ICP and with your value prompts. Uh, then I decided to build it using many of the tools that I mentioned. Uh, and finally, I start testing it with different channels and different value props and different personas um, using uh, this Battleships uh, framework. How long do you run these campaigns tests to see if they work? Um, it really depends on your budget. So uh, our rule of thumb is you want to run something and get at least a few hundred interactions. So if you're um, trying to... Um, I know split tests to different landing pages and you're, you want to get free trials or, or leads, then you at least need a couple hundred um, sort of lead forms or lead submissions for this to be statistically accurate. That said, you can make directional decisions very, very early, meaning in a few days or less than a week. Uh, so if you run six campaigns, for instance, and one uh, is driving most of leads, uh, then you can probably pause the other five and then move on, right? So it really depends on how much 
uh, time do you have, how much budget do you have, uh, and then the, the initial data. What I always recommend is if you have the budget for the first two or three days, if you're running paid advertising, to just um, go a bit higher than you're comfortable with and then uh, lower it down because uh, that gives you more information faster. Um, do you run this in parallel? Um, yes, uh, ideally yes, because otherwise you're, you're going to spend, I don't know, a year just testing 12 campaigns. So either create multiple versions of the landing page or just like, call, like duplicating whatever landing page I created, or I use a tool like Write Message. Um, so Write Message, Node.io. Uh, and what they do is they help you personalize landing pages based on different variables. So what you can do is you can um, just, if let's say you can do something like, if the, lead, the traffic comes from Facebook, show one thing. If the traffic comes from or is tagged with a specific UTM campaign, show a different um, uh, title or a different imagery or a different button or a different color or whatever. Um, <laughs> they are fancy. I'm a customer, so essentially, instead of showing me the landing page, they are just welcoming me back and <laughs> thanking me for being for being a customer. But if you and this is just the power of their own tool, uh, right? Uh, they know I am a customer. Uh, so if you go and check writemessage.com on your own uh, site, uh, on your own computer, you'll be able to see what the tool looks like. At what point should you link on paid ads versus posting in free online communities? Uh, that's a great question. Um, and again, everything depends on the context, on your product, on a bunch of different things. Uh, Slack, uh, paid and free communities are great if you know how that community works. Uh, so it's hard. Each community has certain contacts or certain lingo or the certain ways they do things. Um, let's say you want to you want to let promote a financial services product. If you go to the Wall Street Bad subreddit, you're going to get demolished. Uh, unless you know what you're doing and unless you're familiar with the subreddit. So if you're part of different communities, um, that that's a great way to start. But if you have the budget, then I would consider in testing multiple channels. I mean, it doesn't have to be adult, right? You could do podcast sponsorships, newsletter sponsorships, um, whatever. It's, it really depends on your product. Um, and one thing that I, I don't talk about that, but I use a lot is uh, cold email outreach. So that's also very, very valuable. It's a perfect way to find your, your realistic customer profile uh, and then reach out to them and spend essentially zero dollars. Uh, happy to do a community session on that. Is there any risk of landing page blindness since some may seem to have similar format and similar content? Uh, yes and no. Um, I guess that's why Ahrefs did things uh, slightly differently. Uh, but there's a reason for this. And the reason is it works. Uh, and when you're such, when you're at an early stage uh, like we are, then if you want to just, you shouldn't optimize for being different. Maybe that will come later. Uh, but again, this, this is really depending on the context. Um, what tools do you recommend for doing all of this cost effectively? Uh, Webflow, probably. Uh, Card is super cheap. Uh, just a WordPress site and buy a, a template. If you can code, you can always buy a $7 template in, in, in ThemeForest and just upload it to a server and you have a landing page. Um, analytics, Google Analytics is, is free. Um, I think Hotjar has a free plan. Uh, there's an other one called Crazy CDI. I think we also have a free plan. Um, so there, there are a lot of ways of, of doing this for free um, or almost for free. Um, you probably, like, it's going to be a lot easier to spend a handful of dollars than just to spend nothing. And it might be a better use of your time. So maybe a WordPress theme, uh, landing page builder like uh, Wix, WordPress, Webflow. My preference is, to be honest, is workflow, uh, but it's, it's entirely up to you guys. Um, how much do you spend for each channel per campaign to get meaningful results? It's very hard to answer that question like that. It's, it's, it really depends. Um, happy to jump on a separate call uh, in like next week or something and just walk you through, uh, walk through your, your, your own specific setup. Should you list features that don't exist yet or are being built or just features that can be used if they sign up today? 
Uh, that depends. Um, the thing with over-promising and under-delivering is that people won't stay. That said, if what you're doing is uh, not a, like a, you don't have a, like a real onboarding, you request a demo or something, you can do that and then just ex go with them through an onboarding and just, or, a, or a sales call and, and tell them um, what's going on. But I always recommend people just uh, just show what they have right now. Because otherwise, like this comes back to, to the whole ideal customer profile and realistic customer profile thing. Um, you should try to make sure you can solve at least one problem very well, and from that, expand your customer profile. Um, how do you consider statistical significance in this A-B test, uh, specifically looking at Facebook ads? I think I answered that before. Uh, it's hard to, to get this test to be statistically significant. What I recommend is to start looking uh, at data directionally, and then once you have two or three winners, then yeah, you absolutely need to, need, need to spend more money or more time on getting more leads or more signups or more purchases uh, um, in, so you can have actual real A/B tests. Um, one question on the personas: you describe typical users here, so that the viewer understands if he should fit any bucket. Uh, uh, no, I, I, look, I guess the question is here if, if how explicit you, you gotta make the, the personas. Um, what I like to do is I make it very clear that this is for HR teams or for CEOs or for whatever, but I wouldn't sort of name a persona. Uh, I wouldn't say this is for Lisa, who's a marketing manager. Mm -hmm. Good point in Webflow and SEO. Um, that's a good point. Sometimes the Webflow is very slow, uh, loading and, and speed is very important for SEO. Uh, that said, it really depends on your business. Like, <laughs> um, yeah, you can always move away from Webflow later. Um, once you write your copy from whom do you generally get feedback? Um, usually, Coworkers, on deck fellows, friends, uh, and it really depends on who you sell to. So if you're selling to moms, then you pro I would probably ask my mom to read the copy uh, and, and go from there, or my mom's friends and see if they understand it. It really depends on who your customer profile is. Um, uh, do you recommend landing pages? I don't know about Bubble or no code tools. Like Webflow, I would consider Webflow a no code tool, uh, but I haven't used Bubble before. Um, do you recommend landing page CTAs to get emails or to get users to pay to validate? Uh, that depends. Like, what's your product? If you're B2B, uh, and it really depends on your stage, really. Um, both, both work. But if you're selling B2B and you're gonna ask for money, then emails are useful at first, but then you gotta start asking for a credit card. Um, that said, if you're selling to the enterprise, then probably you gotta ask for emails and then uh, start just a traditional sales process. Um, if you're selling in like, I don't know, if you're doing DTC, you probably need to just add a product and ask people to pay for the product. Uh, the closer you get to a real thing, the better, otherwise you just might be lying yourself, uh, to yourself. Um, cool, so 17 minutes left. Any other questions? Um, or we can just go through landing pages. Cool. No questions, so perfect. Uh, let's see how many landing pages, I have a few here. I'm gonna open them up. So I'm gonna start with the one that I want to start make sure. Perfect. So uh, copy Smith, one step uh, content marketing. Um, let's see. Cool. So uh, the the main headline one step content marketing doesn't do a lot for me. Uh, I do like the navigation that it's simple. There it's not super uh, cluttered. And also the, like the call to action is, is um, very, very clear. 
Uh, I would only have joined the waitlist if you're actually doing a waitlist. Like if you want to start a sales process, I would do something like um, request a demo or, or something like that. Um, the description is, is, is decent. Uh, we, we help you write your blog posts, product descriptions, add tech lines, and SEO metadata. Um, this thing, our first uh, 1,000 signups get a one month free trial. Uh, that's not great. Uh, uh, it says you're super, super early stage. You're not gener generating a lot of confidence. Um, what I would do is, let's see, apparently, uh, this is how the product works. works. You answer six short questions, uh, then you're done, and AI generates the article for you. Okay, so that's that's a cool product. Um, I'd be, I can see the use cases, uh, definitely. Um, I would be very interested in seeing how it actually works. So uh, first, I would, uh, like, develop prop, prop would be something else. It would be um, write content at scale, or write content that converts and generates traffic at scale without uh, breaking the bank, for instance. And then explain how it works, like uh, entering inputs, uh, we help you, and, and our AI helps you write blog posts, product descriptions, blah, blah, blah. And then I would probably have here, instead of this image that is isn't super descriptive, I would have, would have something that shows what's the input and what's the output. From there, I would probably, since this is a very new value proposition or something that I, I don't know if I trust AI, uh, I've seen those robots just hit, hit against the wall many times. So I would probably add some social proof here and some testimonials. So in here, like I can see uh, that you started doing that, but I will do it in here, like just right below the the, um, the, the hero section. Um, the FAQ is nice, but I'm not sure if, if like this is a question that a buyer might have. Uh, what's your data policy? Um, your FAQ should reflect the questions that you get through the uh, sales process. And then for a step into marketing, what I do like is the final uh, big call to action. So um, this is a great start. Uh, there's some room for improvement on the copy. Uh, maybe you can change the image here, uh, add some, some logo, some, some testimonials. Let's go to the next one. Um, one, two, three, ECG. Uh, we help your business get started on the ECG journey. Uh, I'm assuming your persona knows what ECG is. Uh, uh, so that's good, which is, it means, okay, I know who you are. I know what you need. I know the code words or the acronyms that you use. So that's, that's great. Uh, that said, that doesn't really explain me how uh, you help me on my ECG journey. Is this a product? Is this a consultancy? Is this... Uh, service that you do for me, like, I don't really get it. Um, so this image isn't super helpful either. It's a bit distracting. Uh, I know where I wrote it is, is there. Um, and then the call to action is a uh, bit more. Um, if, the, if the goal of the landing page is uh, you want people to read more, then that's fine. But you probably want to, like, want them to do something else. So either request a demo or, or make an inquiry or to check something out. So I do like, well, so I would change the CTA and probably have like a lead form or something, uh, not a newsletter. Uh, so a lead form and then you, when, whenever someone get, enters their email, uh, I would probably contact them uh, as soon as I can, sort of like a typical sales process. Uh, then one thing that that's that's a bit strange is that here you, you assume uh, that the persona knows what ECG is, but now like a big part of your landing page is saying is explaining what ECG stands for. So it's either or, uh, and probably if your buyer knows what ECG is, uh, then you probably don't need this. Uh, like this is helpful. Um, but I'm not getting any clear, what should I do? Should I read and that's it? And then subscribe to the newsletter and what happens? And how do you help me? I don't get a clear sense of how you're helping me. Uh, it feels like you're just selling me ECG, uh, like selling me on the benefits of, of, of getting started on, this, on ECG. Um, cool. 
Equip.io, construction hiring made simple. Uh, grow your team with valid mechanics, journals, and master everything. I will like this. This is this is really, really cool. Um, the, the, the imagery is super helpful. Um, this is this is good. This is a good start. Uh, I would pro. So I'm assuming this is a marketplace. Uh, cool. Hire. So this is a good start. Maybe show me. So this is for contractors. Okay. Um, do something like find the best contractor near you or something like that. That's a bit more uh, sort of explicit that ju than just construction car and made simple. Uh, but like, but it's this is pretty good. And then grow your team with valid mechanics, German, and you know this thing that changes. That's really cool as well because I can see that you have like everyone on the platform, and you're thinking about the benefits. Like grow your team with valid. Like the valid thing is probably very important because you gotta, you gotta make sure of the quality of the worker. So. This is this is good. Uh, then you show the the traits. Um, I would try to add some social proof here. Uh, I don't know how that, this would work. Whether the social proof is super local uh, in something like this, maybe testimonials, not just logos uh, of, of people who have solved problems using the platform. Um, but this is it's good. I can see what their traits are, what their job types, and then higher value high traits near you. Maybe. Okay, this, this is great. So this guy works. This should probably be uh, like higher up on the page. Like describe your opportunity, invite matches, uh, hire and get back to building. Like this is great, testimonials are here. Um, this is a great start. It's it's not perfect, uh, but it's, 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 it's a good start. Uh, one thing would be you're mentioning that it's uh, NYC only, and I would put that on the top. Um, at first, as you if you're only focused on, on NYC or in the tri-state area, uh, but this this is a good start. Uh, and I see that you are a marketplace, so you have this for workers. Uh, when you're a marketplace, your homepage should probably reflect the side of the of the of the marketplace that's harder to acquire. Um, so in this case, in this case, for you, it's contractors. Then great if it's workers, then switch it around. Uh, that's cool. Um, this this a good uh, a very good start. Um, cloudy, cool. No command terminal connecting all your daily workflows. Uh, cloudy is an OP terminal that brings all the data. So. This one's a bit harder to assess to me since I'm not the sort of the buyer here. So I don't know how big of a problem this is, uh, but I do like how um, it's essentially, it's very clear what the value proposition is, and then you're going through the features and that's it. Uh, I do like that. Uh, I would probably have the same uh, call to action. So we have sign up, we have a get started, and you have installed extension. I would probably have just one of them. Uh, just for consistency sake. Uh, but this this looks uh, simple. Uh, let's see. Take me to an ocean, so I'm gonna avoid that. But th this this looks good. Uh, I, maybe I'm not the right person to assess this one, but I can see that like this is clear. Uh, I would look into the call to actions. Obviously, success is a team sport. It's a community for personal and professional development. Our mission is to help you become the best version of yourself. Okay, cool. So this thing on the right doesn't tell me much. It's just a logo and a mock-up of an iPhone. Uh, that's that's not really helpful. Um, success is a team sport. That's not really helpful either. So the call to action could be join a community and level up and level yourself up, for instance. Uh, Something along those lines, probably. Uh, you know better than me, but this is too broad. It's too abstract. Uh, that tells me nothing about your product, about how you can help me. So, something more, more like you join our community of professionals and level up or level up your career, maybe. Uh, and then I like this description. Uh, it's a community. Um, then we match you into virtual meetup groups with current curious, thoughtful, and motivated people. Um, Maybe 
this video should be the background here uh, if you can get it to load fast uh, and not distract from the copy. But this video is a lot more clear or more helpful than this mock up. Um, cool. So we'll find your team, you pick the goal, uh, connect with the lab. Um, yeah, maybe a, a bit more uh, around uh, how you'll find my team, uh, then you pick the goal, and then, then what's next, and then join policy. Cool, let's try a few plans here. Cool, so this is somewhat expensive, uh, 150 or 300 a month. Uh, so I would either make the landing page a lot more helpful, or I would, uh, instead of just pushing them to just buying right then and there, uh, give them a way to opt in or to just enter the information and then you can start a typical sales process. Um, that will help you a lot and it, you're gonna learn a lot uh, as you sell it yourself. So, four more minutes, uh, four minutes. I'm not sure for sure this, but look, this looks really good. Uh, well, this was an example of of something or problem that they can use. I guess this was an example of a product that they can use. Um, but it's a great landing page. The website we look for startups. You're telling me two things. What do you do? Oh, and who is this for? The fastest way for startups to go live, design and publish a beautiful website in no time. Um, yeah. Generate something unique, edit, edit everything, publish, uh, and that's it. That's, it's great. Like this perfect. Uh, and I think it's stock to share it is. Um, cool. Let's see. Money goal. Make more money on Medium. Yeah, that's perfect. Uh, money goal gives you analytics, like, suggestions, and raw data to help write more hits, build the following, and make more money writing on Medium. Uh, perfect. Yeah, it is like this. This makes perfect sense. Uh, what you could probably do here is I would probably put the screenshot first and then the, the CTA and some social proof. So this is how I've done it in the past, for instance. Uh, manage all your, all your obligations in one place. Um, that's, that's a valid prop. And you can see um, a screenshot, some call to action, low roles for customers, and then request a demo. Same thing, so the screenshot, social proof, and then uh, request with access. Features, that's good. Yeah, like this is a good uh, hero section. Of course, it's like the rest of it is missing. Um, the only thing that I would suggest is that the features frame, it, frame them in terms of benefits, uh, right? So instead of putting analytics, I would put something like track your earnings and then explain what it is. Um, instead of alerts, I would put something like know when your stuff goes viral. Uh, and, and, yeah, Ho hopefully that makes sense. Um, yeah, two minutes to go. Uh, let's see if there are any other questions. If not, feel free to just unmute yourself and jump in. If you don't yet have concrete social proof or testimonials, that's a great question. So, what I would do is I would um, put something around the founder. So uh, Elena, we, we talked yesterday, I would put something around your experience in uh, NGOs. Uh, yeah, essentially that's that's what I would do. So if, if you are you know, doing a FinTech app and you work in banking, uh, do something around that. Or if you're working at Revolut or N26, just put something around the founders uh, or your advisors or your investors, whatever you can do to signal people that you are not a random weirdo on the internet. So yeah, one minute left. Uh, if you guys have any other questions, feel free to jump in on, uh, oh, I skipped the landing page in Slack, let's see. So Cone Network, uh, shared services, uh, create complexity, we can help with that. Uh, marketing IT, data analytics, um, like we're receiving budget waste and design incentives. Request demos in action will help companies be more agile, scalable, and efficient by making shared services easier to access, innovate, and manage. Like this is a much better hero section than this. Um, this is a lot more clear. Um, 
this essentially tells me what the product does. And it shows me what the product does. Services, marketplace, storefronts, uh, accounting, all that stuff. Your business unit, again, I would add some social proof if you have that. Um, I like to demo integrations. Uh, I would put the integrations in here, something like you can pull data from all these sources. Um, and then request a demo. And that's what I mean by just having a request a demo for uh, start a sales process. Uh, there's like, this is too abstract, I think. The logo is too big. I like that there's no navigation on the navigation is here on the left. And there are like, this one call to action, which is request a demo, but this is much, much better. Uh, so I would do something like this, uh, some social proof, the integrations, and then I would probably try to break down each and one of the use cases here, uh, just as features, let's see. So let's go back to a real landing page I built. So the before and after, um, but like this is features and benefits, right? Start a new case with a click, stop chasing passport copies, forget email held. Like this is highly specific to low mobility teams, uh, but see how I break down each and every part of this platform. Um, yeah, on the landing page. So I would do probably something like that since your product is, is it's a, yeah, your product is um, complex. Uh, Wines Group, management consultant that delivers uncommon vision to see opportunity where it's not an adaptable strategy to handle even most uncertain situations, right? Capabilities to transform ideas into action. This looks like a typical like agency page. Um, it's not super, super helpful. Um, you're telling me you are doing everything, right? Vision, strategy, and action. Uh, it's not like it's not super super clear how you can help me other than just vision strategy and action what i would do is i would probably like do a couple of case studies um so one main value prop uh i don't mind the management consulting that delivers it says like the rest of crop we're good uh but if you're doing vision strategy and action then show me how you help someone with their vision and what happens so we helped Slack redefine their vision and they did X. Our strategy will help Y SaaS company uh, with their strategy and they killed their competitors. At action, we helped whatever e commerce company. Uh, so, if you're going to explain me what sort of vision, strategy, and action uh, help you can give me, then show it with examples. Um, where we're different in, in terms of discipline perspective, adaptable model, focus, and execution. Uh, this is to to not like to focus on you. Like that's that doesn't really tell me anything as a buyer. Like why we're different and why should I care? Uh, what does adaptable model means to me? Um, what does the focus and execution means to me? Um, uh, I like to do some testimonials. I would probably, as I mentioned, uh, get them up here uh, with the case studies. Um, the how we work is hel is helpful. Um, I would probably put them uh, like linearly. This is like it's one, two, three, then you gotta go back to the left and read four, five, six. I would just line them up or stamp them up and then they request a form. Uh, but yeah, I would do like a value prop and then for each one of those things that you offer, explain me what it means, how you can help me and how you, you've, helped, you've helped someone in the past. Um, and then last one is uh, like a private chef stock your fridge. This is freaking cool. Um, Chef made family meals delivered to you, just hit and serve. Um, see the menu. Design by parents for parents, get five hours back every week. Like, that's perfect. Like, that's a great way of saying, hey, like, this is a benefit. We do all the planning, shopping, and cooking that goes into a few weekday meals. So instead of making, like, giving me just this copy and forcing me to for distill it and, and figure out, oh, okay, I can save time. They are the same thing. Like, get five hours back every week. Everyone will love what's, what's for dinner. Um, another, or another, yeah, you can do that, or you can do something like kids won't complain, and then no subscriptions. So that's super, super helpful. Set up meals, chat to table, hit and serve, uh, pass menu favorites. Um, so this is good. What customers are saying, 100% happy uh, family guarantee. So that's really cool. Uh, I really like it. I would rearrange a few things. So um, testimonials up here, 
uh, the, the guarantee as well up here. Uh, see the menu, let's see. Cool, so this is just an e-commerce setup. Um, but like, this is, this is a good start. The only thing that I, I would make super clear is where do you believe, like if I, if I get to this page, I'm gonna wonder like, where do you deliver? How long does it take? Um, is it um, cold or caught? Um, how, like, how many days in advance do I need to order? So all that stuff, like um, you can see how e-commerce companies, let's say, uh, that shows the address. Sorry, it's Argentinian site, but it's, I think it's perfect. Like the address, no, not great. But something, someone like played it should do this properly. Yeah, I guess they died. Slando maybe? No, I, I can't find a great example, but most e-commerce companies, they show like free shipping, uh, two-day delivery and, and all that stuff. So those uh, objections that I'm probably gonna have as I buy or, or the questions, like try to answer all those questions in advance. Uh, uh, cool, uh, thank you. But, but, but the copy the copy is really good, man. Uh, like this, get five hours back uh, uh, every week, designed by parents for parents. Like you're saying, like this is my customer, these are the benefits, uh, see the menu, this, this kind of work. So uh, yeah, cool. Awesome. Uh, I think uh, we're good.